welcome to this training. Today's training is about the flywheel. Um, now, you, we've gone through a couple of parts of this uh, of the series, essentially taking you from where you where you pick your your market, where you're going to pick which product you want to sell. Then you're going to take into which product is the most ideal to sell next or to sell first. Now, I want to talk about why um, an introduction to the next part of the series in um, essentially something we like to call a sales funnel. Now, before we get into the sales funnel, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, a flywheel. Now, this is the flywheel in basic terminology is like what? Like think about it like this, um, like a car, right? The more you press the engine, the more the, the car like spins its engine pushes faster and the faster the engine moves, the more the tires move on the on the car and the faster the tire moves, therefore the car moves faster, okay? So that's like the cause and effect of things. And that's basically what happens in any of these situ situations or scenarios is that you push the gas, the gas push or like essentially that pedal makes the motor work harder. The motor works harder and therefore the, the axles or I don't know what spins the tires, but the tires revolve faster and when the tires revolve faster, the car moves faster, okay? Similarly, there's a negative thing, which is the brake in a car. So in this particular training, I wanna to talk to you about how to put your foot on the pedal and go fast, okay? And this is based on the, the, the business models of like Amazon, Google, Facebook, all of these Uber, all of these have these particular, this one thing, it's called a flywheel, okay? In other words, other people call it the network effect, okay? How things get bigger and more expansive and faster, okay? An example of an anti-flywheel is Blockbuster, um, Toys R Us, things like that, Yellow Pages. Those are things that just net had, probably had a, a system to grow, but when things started to change, they blew up, okay? And so, um, in this particular training, I want to talk to you about a flywheel effect of leads, appointments, sales, and um, experiences. So um, in any flywheel, okay, a flywheel, like I said, it's just to put the engine in overdrive and make the machine work faster. And that's what you want. You want a machine to work, like essentially you want a, your business to be a, a machine, okay? And the only, and this doesn't matter if you are barely starting off, you're five trying to, or $1,000 a month, trying to get to $5,000 a month, or 5,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 20,000, 20,000 to 50,000 a month, 50,000 to $100,000 a month, or beyond. All businesses have, could have this, or if they don't have this, they probably have the negative flywheel. So um, we'll talk about the, the flywheel effect of growth so that you guys can take a, a good sense of how this program or this education program is going to help you take it to the next level in systems understanding and process mind thinking because that's very very important when you start to see your business as outside of you and not you then the business can grow and that we're going to talk a little bit more about that later but um in this particular training i wanted to talk to about um for example Let's use Facebook because most of you guys are on Facebook and that's how you came here. So let's talk about Facebook's flywheel effect or in other words, the network effect of Facebook, right? So the way that a, a flywheel works is for every, for a flywheel to work. And what that means is like something like a snowball effect, they call it. The, like as something starts to roll, it starts to get traction and starts to build up real fast. And that's how Facebook blew up like out of nowhere. For every flywheel to be in effect, and I learned this from Sam Oven, so don't take this from me, but I learned this from Sam Oven. He used it as an Amazon. I'm using it as Facebook because we're in the relevancy here. So we're just going to use it in a different frame. So for Facebook, it would say something like this. For every flywheel, the customer, for every new customer, the experience has to get better. Okay? So every time you talk to a new client, the client experience should get better. Therefore, the referral basis goes higher and higher. And that's, you know, that's how they do like the referral marketing and so on and so forth. But essentially, for, for a flywheel to exist, for every one customer, the experience has to get better. 
Okay, so let's say you get five new customers. Say you get one new customer. You're probably gonna be like, oh man, like, uh, I just wanna sign them the contract and get away. Like, that's typically what we do. I've done it plenty of times where I'm just like, um, the program's 2,500, sign it here. And then go sign it and you like hold your breath because you're like, oh my gosh, what if they don't sign it? They sign it and you're like, ah, but now I have to fill up, fulfill it, right? That's typically what that, that flywheel looks like in a negative connotation. But the more clients you see, the more people you talk to, the more this flywheel is gonna go upward in your benefit, okay? Now let's use Facebook for example, and then we're gonna use the, uh, the sales appointment leads and customer experience to get to a customer experience better, right? So Facebook, when it first started off, Facebook was to bring people together, right? because there's nothing like creating a culture or creating an environment of growth, right? There's nothing like it on the planet, creating a culture. Like, have you ever talked to someone that's um, in CrossFit, for example? They always wanna talk about CrossFit because it is a culture. It is a cult, sure. It's like a community of people like, it's kind of like being in a gang, so to speak. And you wanna create that amongst your clients or yourself with the people you're surrounding with. You wanna create a culture like that, but. To create a culture like that, you have to create a flywheel, right? Uh, there's another company called ClickFunnels that does the same thing. They're really, really big because of the, the flywheel network community kind of feel. Network marketing, for example, it's the same, same aspect as a flywheel to it. Now let's go back to Facebook real quick. So for, ever, for a flywheel to be there means that there has to be every new customer or every new person that comes into Facebook, the customer experience has to get better. Okay, so let's use it for example. Facebook's created and Facebook gets a new person into Facebook. Like let's say you get a new login, boom, someone comes into Facebook. Then, you know, they tell their friends about it and therefore another person has to come in, right? So we would say login right here, this would be a, a new customer, then it would be um, new person wants to come in because of this person so they can network then that becomes a platform and then marketers want to be involved in it businesses want to put their money into it so more people come in here and that speeds the customer experience because now people are putting money onto Facebook and therefore Facebook's allowing more people to open up and it becomes more and more faster and faster so like let's just say someone from if it was only for Texas, okay, let's just use it for example. If Facebook was only in Texas, it would have like, it wouldn't have as growth it does now, right? Because what happens is that it's a little ball, okay? And someone logs in right here. And if it's only in Texas, they're only gonna meet with someone from Texas. They're like, oh my gosh, I just met someone from Texas. They're from Houston and I'm from um, Harlingen. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then, they tell, Facebook goes and tells um, businesses, hey, so we're like the only platform in Texas that can connect face, uh, people from Houston and people from San Benito or Arlington. And the business goes, oh, that's cool. How can I spend money to get these people? Boom, they inject them right there. And then what happens is those two people get hit with ads. More people see that and then it gets the customer experiences broadens because now Someone from Houston, someone from Harlingen got connected and a business owner got injected in there. So now the flywheel goes like this and then they create a new person because they say, the person from Houston goes, oh, you know what? I'm gonna tell my friend from, from San Antonio that I'm on this Facebook thing, I met someone from Harlingen. Okay, cool. The same effect will be happening over here with the Harlingen person. Oh, guess what? So Houston, San Antonio, come up here, boom. They create a customer, then the customers create new customers, right? So it's like this. And then the one from Harlingen talks to the guy in Wesico or whatever, McAllen, and says, hey, I just talked to some guy in Houston, you should talk, you know, you guys should talk, you guys are in the same field. Boom, they co collaborate, and then that business owner says, hey, I just met these, this new platform that it's called Facebook, and we can advertise on it, and there's new people on it that nobody else can get a, uh, get into. So business owner talks to the next business owner, two business owners come in, they spend money, it's the same thing. And you see how this flywheel or snowball effect goes up. Okay, and that's how Facebook created the kind of like 
two billion users per day because they they maximized this flywheel effect. Now, obviously, um, there's only a few of these little um, I would call them what would I call them? There's only a few of these types of giant companies out there. Google's the same thing. The more that people search, the more people are on Google, the more Google comes up, the more Google comes up, the more people get on, the more advertisers get in. It's like, you know, you see where this is going? Like, let's say for example, Google became Google because they were starting to search for things. People started to search for things and then they started to tell their friends, Hey, listen, so I know this new thing called Google. I'm starting to look for stuff. I could find it. They start finding it. Then the business owners or whatever advertisers come in, they say, Hey, well, people are searching for something. Can you put your products here? Advertisers come in, it gets bigger. That more advertisers come in, the better the experience is because now they have more products to sell. Does that make sense? They had one search thing. Now they have multiple different products. Same thing with YouTube. The more people that came onto YouTube started creating content, the more YouTube started to grow and the more it started to grow, the more advertisers came on. Boom, 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 like that. Same thing, same thing. Okay, so now you know what kind of like what a flywheel looks like. Now I want to tell you how we can use the flywheel into your own business through paid advertising because there is a very specific way to do this. And we're going to highly suggest that at the end of this, we're going to give you organic marketing tactics, but at the end of this, we're going to suggest to you that you use paid advertising, specifically Facebook at this point. Um, and the reason why is I'm going to explain it right now in a couple minutes, but um, paid advertising can create a flywheel effect if you do it right. Okay. You want to piggyback off the, the Amazons, the Facebooks, the Googles, the YouTubes, the thought processes like that, rather than creating like a blockbuster, a blockbuster type deal. This is why Netflix is out there. This is why um, the theaters are now having to do some type of different models. Like if you've noticed in the last couple of years, um, movie theaters have changed drastically to like the seats that they put in, to how much the, each ticket is cost, the package that they offer, they have a monthly subscription now, like they have to change, adapt or they'll die, okay? And they have to create this flywheel effect. So now, now that you've seen some examples, let's see about how we can use this specifically in your business because the business that you're in right now has only four cons the four basic um, things to it lead appointment sale and then customer experience or follow-up so follow-up and customer experience and delivery kind of all intertwined together okay so let's just take a look at what your what your your system looks like because everybody in this program specifically will have the same system, so to speak. And as this program in, in, increases in size, well, obviously this will change because that's creating a flywheel. Okay, we're practicing what we're preaching. We're creating a flywheel by adding new customers. Every time a new customer comes into this program, the better we get at doing these videos because the more questions we have. And therefore the archives of intelligence that we can create becomes better. Like the more you guys ask questions, the more people come in to ask questions, the better the questions get answered. And so therefore in two years, in a year, three years from now, um, if someone comes into the program, it shouldn't look the same way it did from the beginning. Okay. And that's why you always, we always want to be creating new or becoming something else. or always getting better at something, systemizing, making things more optimized. So for this particular part of the program, I want to very quickly talk to you about some numbers. We're going to go real deep into some other things and I highly suggest you go and watch the other videos later on, but I'm going to give you a scenario here and I think it might be a little bit over your head. So that's why I'm saying come back and watch it again later on um, because these are very highly tactical um, systematic ways of thinking. And most times when I talk like this, it takes two, three, four, five, even 16 times to remember something that was talked about inside this video. So it's not going to probably stick to you right away because I'm not telling stories, but um, it will come back to you in the future when you're like looking at things, you're like, Oh man, that is, that makes sense. Right? So the way that your, your work, your program works or your systematic process or this process here is a lead. Someone's interested, create an appointment, which means 
you, you agreed to sit down some way, shape or form. That's what we identified as a, an appointment. Hey, I'm going to meet with you at this time. Hey, I'm going to go meet with you here. I'm going to do this with you. We're going to do this and this and that, right? We've created the appointment, the commitment phase, right? Then what happens is the appointment to the sale. You go to the appointment, you make the sale. Okay. The better, the more sales you make, the better the customer experience gets because now you are, you got some, some kind of traction under your shoes. You've, you've, you've been in the trenches. It's your first one. That's going to be the hardest one. Your first, maybe five will be the hardest because you won't know what to do. You don't know the process. You don't know the system. You don't know where to navigate. The good thing about this, this, this program is that we're going to teach you step by step how to increase this part this part this part and this part so we're going to give you all of these processes and systems but it's important to know the the whole overarching view of things so when we take it deep in there um you understand how, why these things are the way they are and maybe it's not the most exciting stuff inside the courses but it is the most important things um that you have to understand so that when you make decisions you can make good decisions rather than based on emotions okay so lee comes in appointment, then you make a sale, and then the customer experience goes up or down, okay? So you get 10, 10 leads, which equates to about five appointments, which will equate to um, three sit downs. This is the numbers, these are the numbers. You have to kind of know these numbers. So um, you would sit down probably with three of those 10, maybe if you're doing good, um, and these are just averages and you'll probably close one. This is just industry average, um, between sales, right? So you'll close one customer seems to be okay. But you, what's cool is that when you sell your first one, you get momentum and what momentum is, is this flywheel goes fast. So you get excited. You want to work those leads again. You want to work leads over here to get more appointments and the more appointments you make, the faster the sales process becomes and the better the sale you become, the better the seller you become, and it just spins faster and faster and faster. Now, I want to tell you that when you're first starting out, this thing slowly starts to push up. It's kind of like pushing up a rock up the hill. It pushes and pushes and pushes and you get your first sale. You're like, yeah, let's go. Then you do it another time and you probably don't make the sale the next time. It's totally fine. But when you can understand that this flywheel can work adversely as well, you want to find a way to push yourself back into this positive flywheel because check this out, the adverse, the, you know, you saw this right here, you can go, add more leads equals more appointments, equals more sales, equals more people like me, the more people like me, the more leads I'm going to get, the more leads I'm going to get, the more appointments I'm going to get, the more sales I'm going to get, the more people will like me. And it's that, that's the way it is, right? Because you want people to like you, which is why you don't want to sell in the first place, right? You don't want to hurt people's feelings. But what's interesting is the more you sell, the better people like you. It's a weird concept that we don't, us as human beings don't, can articulate in ourselves. But when you see numbers and you see real data, you'll understand what I mean. So the lead, the appointment, the sell, the experience goes up. But here's what's crazy. Momentum can shift the opposite way too and you can go down very, very quickly. So it's very important to understand where this comes in. Let's say you get the appointments get the this but you miss the sale and your emotions take over at the sell point guess what this goes backwards because you're going to be like oh crap i can't sell i'm not going to set up appointments because if i set up more appointments i might fail more and so the, therefore you set less leads you 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 internalize setting up less appointments you set up you get less leads because you're not setting up enough appointments and the less leads you get the worse the customer experience becomes. So now you've created this negative flywheel downwards that the only way out is to go through. Okay. Now I, I just wanted to give you some prefaces to that because that is the realistic um, probability of this. And most of you guys probably will that will hit that where you hit a momentum peak and then it'll go down and then you'll hit like one or two sales and you'll be like, Oh, let's go again. And you go like, boom, 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 boom. and you miss the sale here or you miss an appointment doesn't show or someone tells you bad stuff on this lead process. And you're like, Nope, I'm not going to do it again. It goes backwards. Okay. Now here's what's cool. Here's what's amazing about this. 
is that when we start teaching you about paid advertising, paid advertising, once you've understood this process, the lead, how to create the lead, how to generate the lead, how to create the appointment, how to systemize these processes right here, generating the lead with paid advertising is gonna speed your process so much faster, okay? So uh, an agent, I'm gonna talk about it real quickly, um, Raul, okay, Raul Gomez is in the program. He, he just jumped into it because he had already been working this part right here. He had been in the industry in a different, in, in a different sales process though. He had been doing something else completely different. I told him, come on in, just help me out. Let's just sell this thing so that we can use it as case study. He goes, okay, cool. Um, he jumps right in. We put about 500 bucks on the ads for him. He got a lot of leads really quickly. He set up appointments. Boom, he pushed the sales. The sales just crushed it like in a good way. And the customer experience started to go up. So now people started referring him. Okay. Because at first people are not going to refer you. You're going to want them to, they're not going to be incentivized. They don't know why they don't know how, and you don't know how, but that's great because we're going to teach you how to incentivize, how to, you know, um, ask for referrals and so on and so forth throughout the program. But what happened was that the, with this flywheel, there's an ability to speed it, to go fast. And this is what we did with Raul. With Raul, I told him, listen, so I'm going to pay, I'm going to put some money on ads. I'm going to get you leads. And this is what you're going to do too. Um, once you understand the process of getting the lead, generating the lead, what their lead means to you, the appointment itself, how to set up an appointment, how to set up correctly the script and all that stuff you're going to get, how to set the sale, how to present the sale, how to, there's, there's specific process for the sales exactly, specifically. And I will talk about it later on in the course, but what I'm telling you now is that you make the sale, the better the experience becomes for the, the end consumer. Okay, so you're sitting down with a potential prospect, the better you get at selling, the more they will like you. Okay, so, so I told Raul, let's put some money on to ads and we have done this successfully so you know it works, okay? So we said, we're gonna pay some money on ads. We're gonna put some leads behind this thing. Okay, so we put some money behind ads. We suggest you guys start probably around $500, probably a thousand. Uh, 500 to a thousand dollars worth of leads you generate leads and then use the system to set the appointments okay once you set the appointments you meet with the cell the you meet with the client and these are systematic processes right here that there's little things in here that help increase these things like there's little processes right in here that we're going to teach you know this probably might be a referral for our process, this will be like um, calendar events, automations, um, meeting with client, you know, and then follow up, follow up. So this will be like where your follow ups come in. This will be meetings um, and dates, so on and so forth. Like there's little things right here that have certain implications to speed this process up better or worse. It, it's just variance, right? But ideally, the more leads you get, the more appointments you will create. The more appointments you create, the more sales you'll make. And the more sales you'll make, the better the experience you're gonna have and the customer, the more confidence you'll have to go and get more leads. Okay, it's just that flywheel effect. And so that's why we say put about $500 to $1,000, allocate that, try to get it out. And we try to show you inside the program how to get at least your first $500 to $1,000 um, organically without having to put money onto ads. So you know, okay, I'm gonna use this money over here to flywheel myself to making more money, okay? And that's the process. Now let me tell you real numbers because these are, you wanna know real, real stuff, right? You wanna know, um, real things and you're like, well, yeah, no, but how do I do it? Right? Here's what I want to give you confidence. I want to give you some confidence in knowing because the unknown, you probably got into this course and like, yeah, I'm so excited. Well, what the heck do I do now? Right? Well, we're telling you what's going to happen. We're going to teach you how to generate leads. Once we help you fix the lead prob problem, 
um, you, you know, and paid ads is going to make, make that real easy. Paid ads will make the lead process go away. So you'll know how to get leads pretty simply. Okay. Then it becomes, how do I set the appointments? Okay. And that's what we're continuously systemizing and we're creating better processes for setting the appointments. That's the flywheel effect. More people come in, the better it gets because the more people ask us, Hey, what about this appointment? What about this time? Should I set up the appointment at this time? Should I, should I meet with the client this? What if the client says that before the appointment? How do I get these things better? Well, the more people will push through it, the better it gets. Okay. So that's the flywheel effect, the network effect. So the better the appointment. So let's use these numbers, right? I'm going to use a real, real time numbers that we're currently using right now. Okay. We spent 1600 bucks on Facebook, 1600 bucks on Facebook. Of that, we generated about 119 leads. Okay. So that will come out to about 14 to $20 on average. That's what you can kind of expect. Those are what we like to call um, KPIs. And we'll establish that later on in the course. I think it might be in the, some of the last modules, but um, we generated about 119 leads from that. And, and so just so you guys know where I get these numbers from, I'm going to share with you how to calculate your numbers like a CEO or a multi-million dollar company. Okay. So you can understand. So how much did it cost per an application? How much did it cost us to get an application? How did it get us like from, from the lead to get on the phone with us to sitting down with the lead or talking to the lead about sitting down together? How much did it cost us? Cost us about 50 to uh, 70 bucks. Okay. Then I said, well, of those 40, 30, 30, 40 um, appointments that you set up, how many did you actually go and sit down and talk to? I said, well, you know, I sat down with a, most of them, sat down with most of them. Like I think he said like 80% or something, something crazy, something crazy. Now you, there's some, we'll, we'll establish your KPIs later, but at the end of the day, what only matters to you is how much, if I put a thousand dollars in, how do I make a thousand back? Right. That's what you're thinking. Well, here's how he closed 14 of those, 14 of those 38. He closed. Okay. Probably a little bit more, but you can see here that it's about 50%. It's about 50% close rate, but to you, it means about $200 to get a new person to talk to give you money. That's about the number you should expect. And you might be expecting a little bit less if you're not, if you're new to this, but I just wanted to let you know because on average, every one of the customers you're going to deal with is probably like 300 to a thousand dollars in commissions that you can get paid out. Okay. And if you saw the agent number money math, you should go to do there and start working with your numbers and start working with your playing with things like just play with that stuff and just mess around with it because um, some of this stuff could get confusing, but what we're trying to do is make this simplistic so you can see, oh, that's where I'm, I'm at this part. I need to get to that part. That makes sense. Okay, that makes sense, right? So let's just use those numbers right there. So six, six times four is 24. Um, six times four. Six fifty, okay. So. Oh yeah, you can get me the so 65. Yeah, I don't even know the math right now. Let me do the math real quick and then I'll show you. Okay, so now we're inside the computer, so I can use the my math stuff. So you can just use like a um, calculator because we said, all right, so you close 14. So let's just say on average. Three hundred to thousand dollars, right? Or two hundred fifty to eight hundred fifty bucks. That's about the commissions you could expect. And we did the agent money map for you, so you can kind of see. But we're here in this in the desktop, and we're looking at it. Fourteen sales so far. He's close. Fourteen sales times for himself. Um, times let's just say let's say five hundred, because um, there's been some that are five hundred. There's been some that are 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 200, 1,800, but it just varies. So I always look at the, the averages. And so he generated $7,000 from $1,600. Okay. Now that right there is indicative of a 
um, that's, that's to show you that the flywheel was correct. It worked right. And so now we know how to teach you how to do this. And so you can do it for yourself. So I look forward to seeing you inside of our inside of our program. I hope you, you get all of this, all of the information that you need um, to take you to the next level, not only in your mindset, but also in the way that you think about, about business or about anything in your life should be more um, objective, not subjective. So it shouldn't be opinion based on these things. It should be more of like thinking like a system that's like, like a high level CEO. Like that's the way you should start to think because now you're becoming, you're becoming more of a, of a business, like a marketing owner, a marketer. Market and this is kind of what marketers think about. Okay, so with all that being said, I see I'll watch you guys in the next video. I know this one was a, a mouthful, very, very technical stuff, very, very hard to understand. But if you come back and watch it, watch it again, and play it over, play it over, play it over, I'm telling you, at the end of this, you will become um, probably you'll probably learn more in this than business school, uh, marketing school. Uh, you would say you're some tens of thousands of dollars, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars, just in thoughts, processes, and in, in the way that think. That's a very important thing to figure out how to start thinking, how to think. So, uh, I wish you nothing but good success, and I hope you guys have a, a wonderful uh, rest of the course. We'll see you on the inside.